Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is AP Physics Chapter Two, Video Three. Today's topic is instantaneous velocity, Part Two. Are to know、uh, derivative is the slope, and be able to calculate instantaneous velocity using derivatives. Derivative is the slope. So,、uh, in the x t graph, that slope is v x. So we know derivative is v x equals to d x over d t. In the v t graph, slope is a. So we know d v over d t is the slope. So d v over t d t should give you acceleration. Now rules of derivatives. Derivative of a constant. Power rule, addition and subtraction rule, and chain rule. First is derivative of constant. Any constant,、uh, the derivative of constant equals to zero. Why is that? Because for a constant, its slope is zero. If slope is equals to zero, derivative is the slope, so derivative equals to zero. Derivative basically is change. There is no change, so derivative equals to zero. Take a look at example x x equals to five. What's the derivative of five? We can draw a diagram x versus t. This is what the graph looks like. What is the slope of this x? Slope equals to zero. Derivative equals to zero, because again, derivative is how x change with t. Now x does not change with t. Next one is power rule. This is most used rule. So this power rule indicate this c could be any constant times x to the power of n. The derivative of this equals to c times n times x to the power of n minus one. Let's take a look、uh, in the examples. First, x equals to two times t to the fifth. Two is your c. N is five. So the derivative of this would be two. That's c times five times five minus one. That becomes ten times t to the fourth. Next one, x equals to four times t to the negative five. In this case, it's four times negative five t to the power of negative five minus one, which gives you four times negative five give you negative twenty, negative five minus one give you negative six. Last x equals to t. This one, what is c? C is one. What is n? N is also one because t to the one equals to t. The derivative of this equals to one. Times one times t one minus one, t one minus one equals to zero. T to the power of zero equals to one. So this, the derivative of t gives you one. Next one is addition and subtraction rule. So when you have two functions, you add or subtract together. You want to do do the derivative of this sum or difference. In order to do that, you just do each derivative and try to add or subtract. Let's take a look at this example. X t equals alpha t squared minus beta t cubed, where alpha equals one point five, beta equals two point oh five. Determine d x over d t. Well, d x over d t, according to the rule, that's alpha one point five times n, which is two times. Two minus one. You'll have to subtract or add here. In this case, is subtract. Beta is point oh five times the power is three times t three minus one. So you simplify this. This is three two minus one equals to t t to the one is just t becomes three t minus. This is point one five times t squared. Now take a look at next one. A car's velocity as a function of time is given by this alpha plus beta t squared, where alpha equals to three, beta equals to point one. Determine dvx over dt. So derivative again, 
The first one is constant. Remember, the derivative of constant is zero. Then this one is beta times two times t to the two minus one. So this gives you 0.2t. So both of this, dx over dt, actually give you the velocity. Again, dv over dt, remember that's a slope that gives you acceleration. Last one is chain rule. This is the most confusing rule. So if you don't understand it, I don't want you to worry about it too much. Look at it a few times, and hopefully you will be able to learn it in calculus class later on. This chain rule says if f is a function of x and x is a function of t, so indirectly f is a function of t. So how do, how do we derive df over dt? So here's the rule. We can do outside the derivative, then multiply by inside the derivative. What does that mean? For example, f equals to 2t to the 5 plus 3t negative 1. The whole thing is squared. What is outside? Outside is something squared. df over dt, you do outside first, something squared. The derivative of something squared is 2 times that something. Something is 2 times t to the 5th plus 3 times t to the negative 1. Then you multiply the inside the derivative. What is inside? Inside is 2t to the 5th plus 3t negative 1. So you do derivative of this relative to t. That becomes 2 times 5, which is 10. t to the 5 minus 1 is 4. Plus 3 times negative 1 give you a negative 3. t negative 1 minus negative 1 give you a negative 2. So that's, how, that's one way to do it. This is outside, that's inside. What is another way to do it? It's kind of the same thing, outside, inside. So you do, because f is a function of x, so you do df over dx. Then you do dx over dt. So this is kind of like outside the derivative, and this is inside the derivative. Let's use the same example. So in this case, this is outside. So f is a function of x. f equals x squared. What is x? x is a function of t, 2t to the fifth plus 3t minus 1. So df dt equals to df dx, which is just 2x, times dx over dt. So 2x is 2 times, what is x? 2 times t to the fifth plus 3 times t to the negative 1. What's dx over dt? Which is 10 to the 10 times t to the fourth minus 3 times t to the negative 2. So this is complicated. So take your time. And if you don't if you're still having a lot of trouble, you can, you know, just wait for a little bit. Hopefully you will be introduced in the calculus class. Let's do another example. The position of an object as a function of time is given by this. xt equals to 3t cubed minus 5t squared plus 6t minus 7. First, I'll find average velocity between t equals to 0 second to t equals to 1 second. Remember, average velocity is displacement over time. So displacement is x at 1 second minus x at 0 second. So basically, you substitute all the ones, then you substitute zeros. If you t equals to 0, the first is 0, so x at 0 is just negative 7. You solve this out, you should get 4 meters per second. Next one, find the instantaneous speed. Remember, instantaneous speed is a derivative, dx over dt. V equals dx over dt. Take a look at this. This is 3 times 3, which is 9 times t squared, minus 10 times t plus 6 minus this one is zero because this is constant. You substitute t equals to one second, you get nine times one minus 10 times one plus six, you should have five meters per second. Another example, so this is again giving you displacement as a function of time, 30 plus 20 t minus 15 t squared, where x is in meters, t is in second. Find an expression for the velocity. Well, velocity is derivative dx over dt. So the first one is a 0. The second term becomes 20. 
the third term becomes 30t. So v equals 20 minus 30t. At what time and distance from the origin is the velocity equals to zero? So in order to find time, we set a velocity equals to zero and solve for time. So time equals to 0.67 second. What is the distance? Well, this uh, displacement, that's x equals to 30 plus 20t minus 15t squared. So we substitute x uh, t equals to that into that expression x at uh, 0.67 seconds equals to 30 plus 20 times 0.67 minus 15 times 0.67 squared. You should have 36.7 meters. Next one, at what time and location is the velocity equals negative 50? To find that, you said velocity equals to negative 50. You solve for t. Then again, to find uh, the location, you use substitute t into that expression. So t at 2.3 equals negative 4.8 meters. So an object moves in one dimension such that xt is proportional to t to the power of 5 over 2. This means v squared will be proportional to what? Let's see, v is dx over dt, right? Since x is proportional to 5 over 2, so v has to be proportional to 3 over 2. So that means v squared is proportional to t cubed. So the answer is e. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.